Hello, everyone. Welcome to our transfer Q&A for psychology. Let's go. So my name's Waylon, and I am a psychology major, if you haven't guessed. <laughs> so I'm one of the peer academic advisors for the School of Social Sciences, and I'm also part of you know, some other clubs, which I will get into later because we do have a club question. <laughs> so just like all of you, I am a transfer student and I transfer from Santiago Canyon College. If you guys don't know where that is, it's in Tustin, kind of. <laughs> so during this panel, students will be provided some quick degree check reminders and we prepared some panel questions for our PAAs to answer. And in the end, we have the opportunity to ask or you can ask us some questions in the Q&A if some were not answered. You're totally welcome to ask questions in the Q&A chat throughout the panel, but please keep in mind that they will be answered at the end of the session. Please do not write your questions in the general chat as that is reserved for more you know, campus links and resources for you to click through. And I will get more into details on what kind of questions you can ask later, but just a reminder, this session will last about an hour and 30 minutes, so please try to stay the entire time as we will answer your questions at the end. But for right now, let's get started with some important reminders about some degree checks. Hopefully you guys got by email. <laughs> so let me share my screen really quickly. Let's see. Can everyone see that? I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> yes. Cool. Thank you. So first off, your university requirements. You see the UC entry level, entry level writing, American history, American institutions. Um, those are not updated and neither are your units. Don't worry, it's fine. Your information is just being processed slowly by the admissions office and registrar's office, which does take time. Um, it should be updated by week six of fall quarter. So please be patient. Your patience is appreciated, yay. So as we all know, we're, most of us are, or all of us should be transfers. So all of us should have done our IGETSI, which covers all of the GEs, except for upper division writing. I think it's somewhere here. Yeah, upper division writing, 1B. So you still need to do that. Don't worry. You can take it whenever you want to, uh, as long as you do it before graduation. Uh, then you also have the School of Social Sciences math requirement. So if you see there, it's in category five and there's two pathways you can go. First off, you have the statistics route, which is 10A, 10B, and 10C. Hopefully you guys can see my mouse. I don't know if you can, but um, pretty much you can go that route. I know that's the more popular route that most psychology majors do. Um, the thing in red here that says F20, that pretty much means, oh, I'm taking this in fall 2020, or in this case, this quarter. <laughs> so don't worry about that. The other pathway you can do is Math 2A, Math 2B, and Stat 7 number. Uh, so that, I believe, is the more calculus route. So if you're like me and would rather take calculus than statistics, we are few in number, but you also have that route. Now, again, you can either take the um, statistics route, which is the 10A, 10B, 10C, or the math 2A, 2B, stat 7. Now, if you see there's an asterisk right next to stat 7, that pretty much means this requirement is already filled. You do not need to take statistics 7. Please do not take statistics 7. It is already fulfilled. Um, as I already said, um, language is probably already fulfilled, but you still also need a computer technology requirement, which will be, you can either take ICS 30, ICS 31 or SOSI 3A or Psychology 114M. You only need to take one of them. Don't worry about it. You're all good. <laughs> um, let's see, option two. So psychology fundamentals. So from what I've seen, most of you will be doing option two because you probably took some psychology courses at the community college. So you maybe probably already have Psych 9A and 9C already done, as you see with the asterisks. As I said again, that means you've already taken it. This requirement is fulfilled. Don't need to test that. The only thing you need to worry about is 9B. It must be taken at UCI. Um, so once again, red indicates you're taking this F fall 2020. Yay. Um, and as for two introductory courses, the only thing I just want to mention, just because I've seen this a lot, 
um, when I'm checking degree checks is that once again, remember the asterisk means, I can't emphasize this enough, the asterisk means you've already taken this course. So anthropology one and maybe your community college equals anthropology 2B at UCI. That pretty much means that 2B is what you've kind of taken at UC UCI. So if you try to sign up for anthropology 2B for fall, winter, or spring quarter, it's gonna, your schedule is going to be like, um, you shouldn't be having that. You shouldn't be taking that because you already took that. Same with sociology one. You already took sociology one in community college and it credits towards your UCI graduation. You do don't take that course. Please don't take that course. <laughs> Um, I think everything else is explanatory. Like, you know, you need to take four core courses in, in psychology. You still need to take three courses in the psychology module, upper division, UD means upper division. <laughs> you need to take experimental psych, depending if you, which one you want to take. Um, each one is offered in each quarter. So just look out for that. <laughs> Um, I think experimental psych and what was that other one? There is a cog sci one too. Um, I'll look into that class, but those are available for fall quarter. I think psych uh, 112A is not available right now. I think it was psych 119. I'm not sure. I will check up on that. Um, that is available right now and that you can sign up if you want to get your research out of the way. But since you guys are just transitioning, you don't really need to worry about that right now. Um, as for four to seven additional psychology courses, that's explainable, so on and so forth. And then this writing on the side saying, oh, certain courses offered in the schools of BioSci, blah, blah, blah. These are important. Please make sure to read them. I know it's like, oh, directions, yikes, I don't want to read this. But I mean, just read it. It's important for your graduation. Just like, and it helps a lot with like explaining your degree check. For example, UD means upper division. I had a kid once ask me, what does UD mean? Does that mean seniors only? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, upper division means, yeah. So on and so forth, courses 100 to 199. I was able to explain that, but you can easily look that up on your degree check if you read the instructions. As a final reminder, um, you need 180 units to graduate to complete the, what, those 180. Uh, two, you need to maintain a 2.0 GPA or a C overall and in your major requirements. And finally, 36 of the final 45 units must be taken at UCI. So I think I got most of them, but does any PAA really quickly want to chime in? But actually, before I forget, um, please do not forget to send in your IGETC certification. And for those who do not have your IGETC completed, Ask your community college if they have a partial IGETC. You or your advisor should send your IGETC partial or just your IGETC to our office via email at transferadmin at sociuci.edu and the Office of Admissions, which I will totally put the links in the chat below. Um, but yeah, if you think a course seems familiar or you might have already taken it, check with an academic advisor from your course enrollment email. It should say somewhere. Probably at the top, it'll say advisor, and maybe you can email them there. Um, or you can also email us, which I will get to that later. But once again, PAAs, do you have anything to say really quickly? Um, yes. Uh, please keep in mind that you need to complete your math requirement before you're enrolled in the experimental psych courses. Um, so you must complete either the calculus portion or the statistics portion, whatever you choose, before you enroll in the experimental psych. So since this is your first, your guys' first year, um, please enroll in your math classes so you guys could take the experimental psych course by your second year. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else want to chime in really quickly? No? <laughs> Guess not. Okay, so we will move on. So really quickly, I will send the links as to if you need to send your IGETC certification or the partial one. Really quickly. Let's see. So there you go. There we go. So the, that's the email you need to contact if you do need to do the IGETC stuff. So now, before we have all our lovely PAAs introduce themselves, I would like to explain to you what a peer academic advisor is. So PAAs are students like you, 
I'm a student, as I said, I'm a senior, so I'm still taking courses while I'm also at UCI being a PAA. So we go through the quarter long training to help students with scheduling classes, general academic questions, academic resources, so on and so forth. So today, I think we have nine PAAs today, I'm, I think, I think so. <laughs> so they're lovely, they're amazing, they're all great, I love them. So we will now have all of them introduce themselves. As I said, my name's Waylon, I'm a psychology major, and um, if you want to know any clubs I'm in, I'm in Tomo no Kai, which is Japanese and Japanese American Culture Club, and I'm also part of, uh, let me see, Ant Eater Studio Audio Production, which I will get into that later. But welcome! <laughs> Let's have everyone introduce themselves now. All right, so um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Karen. I am also a psychology major. Um, besides a PAA, I'm also a foster student ambassador, which is a club dedicated to helping foster youth. Um, I'm also a transfer student. I transferred from Long Beach City College. However, I am not from Long Beach. I am from Southeast LA. Hi, everyone. My name is Iris and I'm a sociology and psychology double major. And I'm also a transfer student. I transferred from Santa Ana College and I am a fifth year this upcoming year. So I, I stayed an extra year. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey everyone, I'm Catherine. I'm also a psychology and sociology double. I'm an incoming fourth year and I'm excited to be here with you all today. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica and uh, I'm a fourth year double majoring in quantitative e economics and data science. Welcome you all today. Hi everyone, I'm Olivia. I'm a third year student. I'm a double major in economics and data science and welcome. Hi, my name is oh. oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, um, I'm a third year uh, double majoring in education and social policy and public service. Uh, welcome to UCI. Hi everyone, my name is Marimar. I'm going to be an upcoming fifth year and I'm a double major in international studies and public health policy and welcome today. Hi everyone, my name is Sam and I'm a third year majoring in business economics and minoring in art history. Welcome. Okay, is that everyone? Speak now, forever hold your peace. I'll do a little dance before we move on. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> so once again, we will get to the Q&A later. I do some questions already popping up, which is great, but well, but first off, we're gonna go through some of the questions that we have actually already set up for our PAAs first, but feel free to keep asking us questions in the Q&A, not in the general chat. <laughs> so let's start with our first question. This is more towards our transfers. First off, how did you adapt at UCI to transfer? How did you feel and what did you do? How long did it take for you to adjust? I'll answer first just because I'm a trans. <laughs> so honestly, for me, it was, very overwhelming and it was a rush. I mean, when I first came in, I was like, oh, already I already have an edge against the high schoolers because they're coming in as freshmen. I came in from community college, so I already know how the college life is. I was wrong. <laughs> so it was honestly very overwhelming because now we're in this quarter system, which for most community colleges, I believe we're in semester, which is about 16 weeks. Now we're going to 10 weeks, even faster than usual, more like you have to keep up with the pace. Um, you already have midterms sometimes in your second week and papers do. And you're like, oh my gosh, I have no time to even procrastinate, which you shouldn't procrastinate. By the way. <laughs> you will get lost and left behind, which would say get a planner, um, keep track of your deadlines, do whatever you need keep yourself focused since especially we're at home. Other thing that was really overwhelming is just campus. I know we're in quarantine right now, but when you when we're able to get back on campus, it's big, like really big compared to a community college. I got lost all the time. I would end up in wrong classrooms. I remember going in once, sitting down for 20 minutes, and I'm like, this is not my class. I don't know this anthropology stuff. And I like ran out. Like um which honestly teachers are used to. If you like totally just get up and run out, they're used to that. <laughs> um, I would definitely recommend Zotfinder and Google Maps if you use them. 
also they sh show where the bathrooms are so like yes <laughs> um but it took me about a quarter and a half or two quarters to really get used to it just because we're transitioning from community college to now a new university life it's big it's overwhelming it's a rush because we only have two years and for me at first it felt kind of lonely just because a lot of the introductory courses I had to take, like 9B, were filled with freshmen. And I'm just like, where are all my transfers? Why are there already social groups? I'm living at home, so I don't live, I don't dorm. So how am I going to, you know, be involved in this community with the little time I have left? Which I totally recommend joining a club, getting active on campus, do whatever it takes to really get yourself out there because university is not all about academics. It's also about making connections and having a great social life. I think that's enough for me because I talk way too much. Um, any other transfers want to pitch in? Uh, yeah, um, so to adjust to UCI academically, it took me about two quarters just because everything is a little fast paced. Um, it is 10 weeks, unlike the semester system, which is 16 weeks. Um, that's why it's also recommended that you guys enroll in 12 to 14 units just so you guys can like get used to it at first. And also because everything is remote right now. Um, socially, that was like the hardest part for me, just because in the beginning, like I was such a shy person and like I didn't go out of my way. Um, however, joining club and like eventually going out of my way to like talk to my housemates and getting to know them, that helped me out so much. So as Willen said, join clubs, even if everything's remote, there are still meetings through Zoom or Discord, all of that. Okay, um, I guess I'll go next. <laughs> so um, at first, I also like my um, peers, I felt kind of like scared because I was transferring alone from community college. And it was kind of hard to kind of like get used to the, the area, a big campus and just the courses where the classrooms were bigger. And it was quite, quite overwhelming. But like, I also recommend that, you know, be mindful of your time because it, two years goes by really, really fast. And I honestly, like, I took another year just to get involved and kind of, you know, really like take advantage of UCI because in a good way. But um, uh, yeah, because it goes by really fast. At first you're like, oh, two years more. And then it's like, oh wait, I'm already going to be a senior. And like, I have to get involved. I have to do research. Am I going to go to grad school? And it's just, everything just goes like in your face. So I just suggest that you kind of like, I don't know, just get get brave if you are shy like me, or even if you're just comfortable, like um, join clubs, clubs are amazing. I mean, everyone is so nice and welcoming and you don't have to stay in the clubs and like, you know, be stuck there. You can just like test the waters and then maybe leave and just explore. That's, that's what being an undergrad is about, exploring and finding your, your best match. And, um, yeah just like they said like um be very um uh organized have a planner write things down you know just keep keep track of everything um and just self-care you know be be nice to yourself you know during, even during these times during remote times it's very important to kind of like you know say like okay you know i have i can only do this much and i'm not gonna like stress myself and don't compare yourself to anybody else like that's one of the things that like like I learned along the way like maybe others are doing more than you or less just you know you, you have your everybody has their own unique path so just ask questions um get informed get involved it's okay to not advance as fast as others you know just, that's my advice and yeah thank you so much those are all amazing advice especially Iris the comparing yourself I totally agree with that because I was the type of person that was just like, I have to get straight A's. I am doing so well in community college. I have to do well in university as well. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give yourself such a high standard, especially since you're just transitioning and you're getting used to this UCI, you know, new lifestyle. Don't push yourself. Don't compare yourself. We're all different and we're all on our own different paths. So let's move on to the next question. We already kind of talked about this, how, but how did you get involved on campus and how can students get involved or join clubs slash organizations? So first off, before I get into my answer, feel free to message us or ask questions about the clubs that we talk about, but yeah, Q&A chat, woo. <laughs> 
Um, but first off, the two clubs I think I talked about already was um, Tomo no Kai, which is a cultural and social club for Japanese and Japanese Americans. Just anybody, honestly, who enjoys the Japanese culture, you're welcome to join our little families. It's great. I love it. We have such great, fun social activities. Um, I'm also part of the Ant Eater Studio Audio Production Club, which is pretty much learning how to make music, um, the different programs, uh, mixing, mastering, what, if you guys know what that means. If you want to learn about it, look into the club. <laughs> um, I'm honestly hoping to be a board member this year, so fingers crossed on that, hopefully. So as for how do you get, like, how do you get all these clubs? Where do you find these clubs? Oh my gosh, you know, what, what's going on? Usually during, um, during when we're on campus, we have this Ant Eater Involvement Fair, which is pretty much Aldridge Park, columns, rows, hundreds, like never ending clubs, just um, literal, like literal uh, booths, just lined up just for you to, invite you to their club, talk about their club, talk about their club meetings, so on and so forth. There's over 600 clubs and organizations. So as me and Karen, or no me, Karen and Iris said, get involved, reach out, you've got this. There's at least one organization or club that is like just for you. Um, as of right now, since we are in quarantine, I heard there's gonna be a virtual anteater involvement fair. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work, but once again, please get yourself involved. Um, I recommend making a Facebook um, so then you're able to find these clubs and you're able to, you know, get their club meetings, find out what's going on, DM the leaders, hey, I want to join this club or I'm interested, what's going on? And if in the end you don't, you don't really have time for the club or you're not really interested, it is totally fine to just not be in that club. They are honestly there for you. There is no hard feelings if you do drop out because we all have our own niches. We all have our own paths. So have fun with that. I will send a link as of right now for um, where you can find the 600 different clubs that you can join. But just know that we still are meeting online. I know a lot of them are either meeting through Zoom, uh, through Discord, which I am mostly Discord. And I know also on Facebook. So yeah, have fun, join a club. Anyone else want to chip in? <laughs> Um, so like Waylon said, Facebook is a great way to find a lot of clubs uh, at UCI, but another good way is actually going through your emails because a lot of organizations and programs on campus will email you about their open positions. That's actually how I found an intern position that I was a part of for two years. Um, I was in ASUCI for two years, which is our like student government, except it's like way bigger because it's college level, you know? Um, and we have different branches of ASUCI ranging from legislation to student services. I was personally in student services. Uh, so we put on a lot of like the school programs, um, so like the concerts, uh, the so actually one of the things we were involved in was the uh, Ant Eater Involvement Fair, which we are hoping, well, I, I've heard that we are going to have one online. So probably more information about that will be sent to your email later on. Um, but yeah, so email is definitely a really good way to find more clubs. Um, I can go next. Um, so I'm part of the LSPA club. It's pretty relevant to this, this major. It's called the Latinx Student Psychological Association, um, and it emphasizes academics, research, practical experience, leadership, and community service, and overall to enhance the co college experience of dedicated students aspiring to serve underrepresented communities in the mental health area. Uh, the main goal is to build a sense of belonging and development of academic family to ease the college experience. Um, LSPA is not restricted to psychology majors, even though it's in the name. Anyone can join. Um, everyone's welcome to come and check us out and join us. Um, we have a, an Instagram page that is being updated and, you know, constant reminders about fall quarter and how it's going to be. I'm also a board member, so, you know, I really want you guys to go. Um, you're all psych majors. You guys can explore everything, even, like, talk about grad school. It's under the, the watchful eye of Dr. Castellanos, and she's also the associate dean, so it's kind of cool to have her mentorship. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else want to chip in really quickly um, about their club, if they want to promote? <laughs> I'll go ahead. 
Um, hi everyone. I'm a, besides a PAA, I'm also a peer health educator at the UCI Center for Student Wellness and Health Promotion. So in that position, um, I'm able to engage in volunteer experiences on campus, such as our health fairs, like the Zot Health Fair, which is our annual fair, um, or De Stress Fest, which are um, fairs held during finals week. So that, those are sort of spaces for students to alleviate their stress and learn of like resources, um, health resources on and off campus. So you're able to work with like um, staff. Um, closely with staff, you're, um, you're split into like focus groups based on like um, your interest on health topics such as like alcohol and other drugs, sexual health, emotional well-being, um, wellness, um, body positivity. So we have like a lot of these options. So you go through like an application process, you get selected for an interview, then you go for like a quarter long um, training and then you're a peer health educator for the rest of your academic career. So it's like a very, um, it's an amazing position. I've met some of my lifelong friends in there. So we have a lot of psychology majors in there actually, you know, they usually go for like wellness or emotional well-being. So it's a great opportunity to like enhance your public speaking, work with staff, get to know people with similar interests. So it's a very awesome opportunity. I'll definitely recommend and I'll also put the link in the chat. Okay, I think we're good. I think we can move on. <laughs> so next, tell us about a campus resource that you recommend the most. What are the resources transfers should take advantage of? I'll go last this time because I know I talk a lot. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. Um, so at UCI, there's this thing called uh, the Transfer Student Hub, which consists of like other programs within it. Um, so for example, one of the programs that they offer is called the First Year Transfer Experience Program. Um, they offer uh, workshops, the LARC scholarship, which is um, so you don't have to pay for tutoring, uh, book loans, discounted printing, and like so much more. And then just in case you're struggling or you end up in academic probation, there's the uh, transfer, transfer Triumph program. Um, so yeah, like that's really cool. And uh, just to quickly mention, there's also a program called Foster Youth Resilience in Education, just in case like any of you are current or former foster youth. Um, it doesn't matter what age you are in the foster care system, uh, they will still accept you. It's not like the community colleges who only accept uh, foster youth who were like in the system after the age of 16. Um, UCI, like, they don't care, like, they're willing to help you out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mention SARC. It's actually in our building. Um, SARC is Social Science Academic Resource Center. And it just basically emphasizes like uh, professional development and um, uh, they have events, they have um, graduate school application assistance, um, even like one-on-one -on -one consultations for resume, CV, cover letter critiques, even they have a study space. Um, yeah, they, are, they have a lot of resources that you could take um, advantage of for professional growth also. And even um, uh, for research and all that, stuff that's really kind of involved in, at UCI and grad school that's also like they, they inform you a lot about grad school if you're thinking about going to grad, a grad school a gap year if you're thinking of a gap year um yeah their peer consultants and their staff is very very helpful um you guys can check them out and really like make them they have they're accepting also I guess um cons consultations through um like us probably during the fall so go to their website I'll put it in the link so you guys can you know keep on um check of that okay it's my turn get ready for this giant mass of information <laughs> so i think i mentioned but as transfers everything feels more rushed we only have two years to, or three if you if you decide to take a fifth year which is totally fine um to really experience uci and many of us may not know oh my gosh it's so rushed we have to figure out what we want to do with our careers and our degrees oh my gosh how am i going to do this what if i want a job and how am i going to get hired i've never had a job before that type of thing i totally vouch for the division of career pathways um the, the main source for uci career resources they have job and internet postings they talk about just careers and possible things that you can go into. I totally recommend you make an appointment. They're great, they're awesome. They also have some of these tools and support for career goals. For example, from actual personal experience, I did mock interviews as well as career um, resume workshops, which I totally recommend you should do. I remember going in three times, asking them to check my resume, please. I keep making changes and 
honestly, it looks great now. It looks so clean and professional. Um, I also did the mock interviews. So then I would be able to, you know, have them ask me questions that maybe they will ask me in like the actual interview, you know, like, what are your interests? What do you do? So on and so forth. And then they tell you like, you know, suggestions and advice on what to do. And actually, um, the career pathways were the people that introduced me to the PAA position, which I'm like, thank you. Thank you. I li literally can't thank them enough for helping me get this position and getting me this far. I honestly can't, would it not have gotten this position without them. So I definitely recommend checking them out. They offer webinars, workshops, information sessions, career fairs, other types of events that you can totally take advantage of. And I will make, um, send a link, but totally um, get your information and go visit a counselor. <laughs> so uh, I have like a little, it's not like a resource resource, but it's more of like something that is here for transfers if they would like it. Um, if you are planning on possibly living on campus or around campus, uh, UCI does have something called the Transfer House in Aurora Vista, which is specifically for transfer students. Um, I'm not exactly sure about the living arrangement, how that's working with this remote quarter and everything, uh, but it is also something to keep in mind um, for later quarters. Uh, I'm going to drop the information down below in the chat, so if you're interested in it, maybe you can reach out um, to the people in charge of that housing process. Okay, I think we can move on to the next question. So this is generally for anyone to answer, but recently all of us experienced remote learning at UCI, which is again on a quarter system. Tell us a little bit about your experiences and your best advice. I'll let everyone talk this time. <laughs> Anyone want to pitch in? <laughs> I guess I'll go. Okay. <laughs> I was like, who wants to go? Um, so my best advice would be just to stay organized. Um, stay organized, self-care, and just check your email. And always be, be aware of the, of the deadlines and everything, because I'm pretty sure professors in this quarter are going to be a little bit more not so lenient maybe like in the in the first remote quarter that we had but are going to be kind of like throwing more assignments out there i don't know i'm just assuming because now they kind of know how to how to structure a remote course so just be you know um know that online is not is not is i think it's a lot harder or challenging in some ways than in class people might think online is easier maybe because it's online but honestly like i felt like it, it was pretty much the same or even more, I don't know. And plus the stress of being at home, like it's okay to take your time and time for yourself and kind of lock yourself in your room and, and shush everybody out if you live with your family. And um, yeah, to have your space for yourself. And yeah, that's pretty much my like top advice for that in remote quarter. And it's a quarter system, just remember, it, go, it goes by really fast. Like Willie mentioned, like you have midterms like, like in the next couple, like in the next, in the four, four, four weeks into the quarter system. So it's like, well, what midterm and then final and then even like probably a paper. So yeah, just be very like mindful of your time. That's my opinion. I completely uh, agree with what, oh, sorry, Sam. <laughs> I agree with uh, what Iris have said. Uh, so most of the lectures are pre-recorded. That means you can watch the videos posted online anytime, anywhere you want. Uh, and you can also always rewatch the video if you would like. Um, so my suggestion is to make a to-do list and keep up with all the work because with all the lectures pre-recorded, uh, people tend to procrastinate a bit, so <laughs> including myself. So definitely push yourself to finish all the assignments before deadline. Uh, don't surprise yourself, your, yourself with a midterm or a paper the next day. So keep motivated. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree with all of that. Uh, and definitely what Iris said, like, you know, taking breaks, taking time for yourself away from academics, that's so important during a remote quarter because sometimes uh, you feel like you're constantly just focused on doing your work, like making sure that you're actually watching the lectures because you're not as like 
I feel like you're not as accountable because you're not going to a like class in person and there's not everyone else around you also learning the material. It's like solely yourself. Um, so it's a lot more of like making sure that you are keeping yourself on track, making sure that you're actually watching your lectures, taking notes, paying attention. You know, it's easy to kind of, you know, wander off when you're just sitting at your computer screen all day. So definitely taking that time for yourself and making sure that you are carving out times that you're doing something that you really enjoy that's not related anywhere near academics, you know, like watching a TV show or reading a book or taking a walk outside. My dad was like, I don't think you're getting enough vitamin D. You need to go outside. So I've been going outside now. Uh, but yeah, so just definitely make sure you're taking care of yourself during this time because it is a lot tougher uh, than you might think it'll be. Like, I definitely did not think remote learning would be as difficult as it was, uh, just because you get used to being in a school environment with a lot of people. And once that's taken away, it's just, it's not the same. So definitely make sure that you are taking care of yourself. I agree with everyone here. Totally. Please take breaks. I beg you. You're going to get Zoom burnout if you sit at your desk for like, what, Four, five, I once sat at my desk for like five hours straight just watching Zoom lectures and my brain just went kapooey. <laughs> so definitely take breaks, watch anime, go outside, take a walk like Sam, get your vitamin D in your system. <laughs> um, I think other than that, yeah, schedule, that's a great idea, planner, whatever you need to do. Um, turn all distractions off, no TV, no YouTube videos while you're doing your homework and stuff, please don't do that. And also tell your parents, tell your family, tell whoever is near you if you're doing homework so they don't come in and bother you. Like my sister will come in, knock on my door, asking me to play Animal Crossing. That is not fun because <laughs> I don't want to say no. So definitely communicate. And also, even though we're online, remember your professors are also adjusting to this new online platform. Um, if you send them emails, they will answer your emails. It may take a some time because, you know, they're getting this overloading bearing of emails all of a sudden because we're all online. But they will answer your questions. Stay in contact with your professor, TAs, and even make study groups because they're great. <laughs> I think that's enough for me. <laughs> so for our PAAs to dorm or live near UCI, how do you commute around campus and what were the advantages and disadvantages? So I currently live in, well, used to before the pandemic, I lived in Puerto del Sol. So it's like a ACC apartment, like probably maybe 10, 15 minutes walking distance from campus. Um, I was pretty comfortable there. I lived there with my roommate, so I had a double. Um, we lived in front of like um, Albertsons and like these cool like fast food places, like top tier, really good places in my opinion. Um, <laughs> and then like we had like a bus stop nearby. so. At UCI, we have like a UCI um, bus line. It's called the Anteater Express. So honestly, just by you know being at UCI, you could just hop hop on it. Like you don't you don't even have to show your ID. You don't have to pay anything. Like I thought you had to give some coins, but no, you don't. You could just hop on. Um, and yeah, so you could also download the Rider app. So R I D E R. Um, it's a Rider app, so it tells you like the times the bus will stop, so you don't have to wait like you know, unknowingly how much time you have to wait for a bus. Um, and then you know exactly like where your stop could be at. Um, so yeah, I could also go walking to school cause it's like just a 10, 15 minute walk. But like if I'm, depending where I'm going on campus, I will take the bus. Um, but yeah, I, it's pretty, pretty easy to commute around. I would say, unless you want to go off campus and if you don't have a car, um, then you could just go with a friend. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like Marimar mentioned, uh, at UCI, like if you live like a little farther away from campus or even like on campus, there's this thing called the Anteater Express. And um, there's also off-campus routes, like for example, the W line takes you to West Irvine, the D line takes you to Diamond Jamboree, and then the S line takes you to Irvine Spectrum. But sadly, because of the whole pandemic going on, the off-campus routes are not going to be in service. So that sucks. You're going to have to Uber or something. Um, but all other lines that do go to campus or like around Albertsons, just yeah, around the area, uh, those will be in service. And I want to add like, um, for most of the lines that goes to campus will only be offered in weekdays like from Monday to Friday. So in like Saturday and Sunday, you probably have like walked to school. 
And also for the line that goes out to goes out of the canvas, like go to Diamond Jewelry or anything, it only offers during weekends. So just pay attention to that. Uh, I just want to add that if any of you or it's just in general are planning on bringing a car, be aware that it is not um, cheap. It definitely is um, something to consider if you're planning on bringing a car because you have to pay quarterly. So it's not like a one time and then it's done. And then um, also if you plan on parking on campus, even though we don't need to go to campus, um, there's also a fee for that. So just keeping aware that stuff will cost money when you want to park somewhere is um, important, especially if like, because I know it was almost 300 at the ACC housing. So um, just keep aware of that. And then um, I would also emphasize timing your travel. If you're going to go to and from campus to between work, internship, home, or um, just to your apartment, because you never know, sometimes a bus might be late. Um, they, you know, traffic is traffic. So just keep aware of that and plan ahead and rather be early than late, so. These are all great advice. I, I commute from home, which is about like a 15 minute drive, depending on traffic. Um, but honestly, the only advantage and disadvantage about living at home is one, I have food available for me 24 seven and I don't have to pay for rent, woot woot. <laughs> only disadvantage for me that I really think is the distance because at the dorm, you have like a like a, what a, a few minute walk just to get to classes or to get on campus. As for me, I have to drive back and forth from home to school, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and by the time it's 6 p.m. and I want and it's a club meeting, I'm like, I want to go home. I'm so tired. I've been driving all day. <laughs> so that's honestly the only disadvantage. But again, I definitely think going to that club, even though 6 p.m. is worth it even though you've been driving all day, just because you have that little social interaction and they have such fun social club events. It's so much fun if you join. So we do have one more question for the PAAs. This is for those who are more interested in research or are in research. So how can students get involved in research and are, oh, once again, are any of our PAAs involved in research? Um, you can go ahead, Jessica. Oh, thank you. Uh, I can go ahead. So I'm currently involved in a research project with a professor from Cognitive Science Department. Uh, I found this research opportunity from Europe, the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. So after looking at brief descriptions about the research opportunities available on the Europe website, I picked one that I was interested in and emailed the professor and asked him if he was still hiring more research assistants. After a brief interview, I was in, so I recommend checking out the Europe website if you're interested in finding a research project. And also, uh, feel free to directly talk to a professor during office hour to find out his or her current research. You can even propose a new research topic to the professor and see if he or she is interested. Um, there are a lot of advantages of being involved in a research project, it would definitely help you improve your creative thinking skills and communication skills. In addition to that, if you want to um, get into a graduate program, it's super helpful to make connections with professors from your research because they know you better than a random professor from some class that you never talked to before they can write you a more like personalized and detailed letter recommendation. Also applications for graduate school uh, usually start in October or November of your third year. It depends on the schools and programs, but if you do want a quality letter of recommendation, definitely reach out to the professors and ask for a research opportunity as soon as possible. So yeah, uh, like Jessica mentioned, at UCI, we have uh, this program called Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. And uh, right now they're hosting events uh, remotely. So like it's something like this, but you have, you have the opportunity to ask questions regarding like research. Um, if you go to their website, they have a list of like on and off campus research opportunities. And uh, there's also the student research interest form. So it's basically a form where you like talk about yourself your research interests and like your goals. And then afterwards, like after you submit it, uh, 
a research counselor is going to contact you via email to set up an appointment and you could talk to them. Um, I'm also currently involved in research as well. Um, this past year, I was involved in this year long series where I learned uh, like research ethics and like um, I learned like we had guest speakers come in who were doing their own projects um, from off and on campus. So I was I would recommend research just because it's an amazing opportunity to learn outside of the classroom. Um, like almost every one of your professors is conducting research of some sort since UCI is a research university. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take advantage of that. So I took the year long series in winter quarter. Um, I was assigned to a mentor. Um, so based on like my interests, I was assigned to Dr. LeBron, who's a professor in um, the Chicano Latino department and the po program in public health. So I've been working with her in the anti, I was working with her in the anti soil lead project, which is like a community based research project um, based in Santa Ana so they're uncovering like lead exposure um, in Santa Ana to like see the, the risk it imposes on the community um, and then afterwards like in spring quarter I was working with her remotely and now this upcoming year which is my last year at UCI I'll also be part of the public health honors research program and I asked Dr. LeBron to be my mentor again for this year because I just love learning from her and as Jessica mentioned like you know you get to have these one-on-one -on -one connections with these professors you meet with them they get to know you they get to know your work ethic your interests so like if you are thinking of graduate school and you need a letter of rec then that letter will definitely be more personalized to you yeah um just to quickly add there's also the call, there's also this thing called uh the faculty profile system uh, the links are in the regular chat um so basically in the faculty uh profile system uh, you could find professors who have uh, research labs. So basically you would choose the school, uh, let's say the school of social sciences or the school's um, social ecology. Oh yeah, social ecology, I think. Um, and then you would choose like psychology after you pick the school. And then you would get like the entire list of like psychology professors who are like, basically it says like their research interests. Research interests. Um, so basically let's say if a professor has like a research interest of I don't know, developmental psych, and you're interested in developmental psych, um, you could like click that professor's name and see what labs they're part of. So you could like email them. Anyone else want to pitch in really quickly about research or are we all good? Okay, well, first off, I just want to collapse all around to all the amazing PAAs. Thank you. You guys are all amazing. Hopefully everyone else is clapping along. <laughs> But now we have finished our panel questions, so yay, right? Now, during these last, well, 30-ish, 40 minutes, as previously mentioned, students have the opportunity to now ask all of us questions, which is great because I already see in the Q&A, the we already have 14 questions. Good job for you guys, extra credit. Um, so if you do have questions, once again, write it in the Q&A chat. We will be answering most of the questions out loud chronologically, depending on you know, when each got posted. <laughs> the regular chat, once again, will be used for links and resources, so please do not text your questions in the chat. However, we can't answer questions regarding housing or financial aid applications, since that's kind of out of our expertise, but we will try to answer the best we can, and hopefully maybe provide some resources and links that you can use to contact whatever you need to do. So, also, if you have any questions that specifically pertain to you, like an AP test score or a specific class, you can email an academic advisor, which we will provide the links um, as to how you can do that. Um, you can honestly ask us any questions whatsoever about UCI, campus, clubs, resources, our own experiences, best spots, best eateries at UCI, or if you want to be in my realm, Disney questions. <laughs> So honestly, even anything about remote learning, just literally, you can ask us any questions. I once had a question about a tattoo and it was a weird question that I still answered anyways. So we will be available to answer anything. So saying that, we're gonna start an um, answering some questions, which is now 17, woo woo, thank you guys. First off, what are some upper division writing classes you recommend? Ooh. Um, I took an upper div writing class. Um, it was called Psych 146 MW, and it's writing about memory. Um, if that's something that interests you, this class was like 
there was a, it was a little bit reading heavy, but it was by far one of the most um, helpful classes just writing because I haven't taken an actual like grammar writing class since like high school. So it was a nice refresher and it also helped me um, like when I write just in general, me, be more cognizant of how I'm forming my sentences. And um, the subject matter was really interesting. We talked about like repression and um, we read a lot of Freud, which was like fun and interesting because like, you know, anyways. <laughs> so um, I would definitely recommend that class. Um, I believe it was taught by Professor Chubb. He also does research. So, I mean, he is a good link if you want to like take a class about memory and then do kind of quantitative research because I believe he does more of like data stuff. So, yeah. So I didn't take an upper division writing yet. I will take it this fall, but I have heard that the social sciences, like if you're not really good at writing or you just want to like get your writing over with, done. I've heard the social science writings are not that bad. Um, I heard really good things from American culture taught by Dewan, but from what I know, it is so hard to get into those classes. It's like every time I try to sign up, already full and I'm like, what? <laughs> So um, you can try to get into those classes, the social sciences one, but just a heads up, they're really hard to get into unless you have like priority. Anyone else want to pitch in about any upper division writing class that they took? No? <laughs> I, well, I can say I took a writing class um, the, my first quarter which was like people were like what really you took your first writing course in the first quarter at UCI I was like yeah yeah I'm badass I'm just kidding um I took it and actually it wasn't that bad it was um I took um what's her name in the sociology of social of work money work and social life I think it was and her and she was Nina Vandell um, she was really, really amazing. I really love the way she teaches. She, she really cares about her students. It's a lot of reading heavy. It's a writing course, reading heavy, and um, you kind of write your own research paper. So, you know, get me. I was like the first, my first quarter, I was like, write a research paper. I have no idea how to write a research paper, like aside from community college, because right, cause at UCI, they have like higher expectations for your writing, and it's a writing course. So honestly, like her TAs and her, she, they were very, very, very amazing. So I recommend her. She's an, a sociology professor, but um, I don't know if, if writing is restricted to your major. Like you can take any writing course. I don't know. I don't know what the rest of the TAs have on that. Can you take a writing course and aside from your, like if you're not a social, like if you're a psych major, can you take a social writing div upper division course? I don't know. Um, I'm a double in public health, so I have to take upper div writing in my public health oh okay okay for, so uh for oh, me oh, go ahead. I'm taking, i am taking a sociology writing course in the fall but i had to wait for the major restriction to go away um in order okay. to take that class it's about baseball i have minimal information but i will deal with it <laughs> okay so maybe just um ask your academic advisor if you can take the like outside your major but yeah her she was really good at um Cleaning everything and you know uh uh you know Chris, uh, thanksgiving is during that this this quarter so you know she tells you like you know be mindful of the time and do your research paper you go out and you know collect data and i never done that before but they are very 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 good at helping you with that so that, that's my advice on that one anyone else i think we got really good answers <laughs> hopefully that was enough <laughs> So I am going to move on to the next question. So am I able to take abnormal psych at UCI, even though I took an abnormal psych class at my community college? Um, so that would depend. I would check your degree work. Um, can, Iris, you look I'm happy. Sorry. <laughs> I, I can answer that because I took abnormal psych at my community college. And yeah, like we said, just double check. But for me, um, I took abnormal psych in community college. And then I asked if it's like the same thing, because it's named the same thing at UCI. And it's not the same thing. It's different um, material, it's different content. So I would definitely check with your academic advisor, but I'm pretty sure, I'm like 80% sure that it's not the same thing. So you can take abnormal psych again, because I'm taking it again um, this upcoming quarter in this abnormal psych. 
it's labeled on the most like so yeah that's my take on that I'm actually looking at your um, degree check right now and it seems like you have not well the abnormal psych does not equal um, 120a at UCI so I believe you are able to take it woot woot <laughs> So now I'm 100% sure then. <laughs> Thank you, Waylon. Of course. Okay, next question. Is there a separate document I should get as proof of completing I get C, or is it just a check on my transcript that indicates I get C? Um, it's a separate document. It's a certification. Um, so you need to get that from uh, your counselor at your community college. Um, and then you will have to email that I get C certification to uh, the Office of Admissions and um, also our transfer um, admit email. And um, Waylon, can you find that for me, please? Uh, can, uh, do you have the link so I can share the screen? <laughs> uh, yeah, one moment. <laughs> And while that's happening, thank you everyone for all these questions. We have gone to 21 and I'm like, this is the best group ever. <laughs> Last time I had to beg for questions. <laughs> okay, it was answered at the bottom. Uh, Never yeah. mind. Oh yeah, I sent that before. <laughs> Um, hopefully that answers your question, unless anybody else has some intake. No? Okay, I guess we're moving on to the next question. So, if I already took stats and calculus at my community college, do I still have to take any more math classes at UCI? Probably not, but I will actually take, check your, de your degree check as that's happening. If anyone wants to talk while I'm like looking this up, that'd be great. Oh, no way. It's by an anonymous attendee. I can't check your degree check. <laughs> um, so honestly, check your degree check. Um, look into your category five and see if there's any like asterisk next to your a certain path. Like, for example, if you, t if you took an equivalent of math 2A, 2B, and stat seven, woo, <laughs> that means your math um, requirement is fulfilled. Waylon, I'm, I think I'm, I don't know if I'm right, but don't they have to take math even though regardless they took it in, in community college here at UCI? It's one of the things you have to take here at UCI? Um, for me, no. Mm -hmm. I took my, all my calculus and stats before I got here, I, um, before I got to UCI. So you can get all of the, that completed before uh, UCI, from what I know. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because I, I had to take math here, so I guess I'm not the best. Yeah, one. I took math all calculus. I don't know why I did that to myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. so I can't entirely be sure, but usually, yes, <laughs> if you took your stats and stuff. But again, check your degree check. Don't take my word for it. If you have more questions about it, email an academic advisor if you don't know. So let's continue. Uh, when doing my SS FOP, I understood that UCI requires general ed classes aside from the UC required general ed. How do I know what UCI general ed classes to take? So once again, degree check. <laughs> um, most of the stuff should be fulfilled by your IGETC. Um, but if you are missing some classes, I can send a link as to what classes can pertain to fulfill what general ed requirement. Does anyone else have their own intake or advice? I mean, these like the UCI general ed classes, those are the ones that possibly were fulfilled by your IGETSI or halfway fulfilled by your IGETSI. So that's just like, like Waylon said, definitely check out your degree works. Um, and if you really want to know like what all, what, if you really want to know all the classes that you can take for certain, um, uh, general ed classes uh, for, oh my God, to fulfill certain general education requirements. Uh, I, I'm going to drop a leak down, which will go to like all the general education requirements like GE1, GE2, GE3, and it'll show like all the classes that are under that GE. So if you do look at your degree check and you haven't fulfilled some of your GEs, then you can definitely look at all those classes. Oh my gosh, that was, that was
Sam, did you beat me to it? <laughs> oh, no, you did. <laughs> But yeah, and also keep in mind that some classes fulfill more than one GE requirement. For example, just because I'm gonna advocate here, I took a Disneyland class and it got rid of my science and technology requirement as well as the arts and humanities. Disneyland is great. <laughs> oh, no, I beat you, heck yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's enough for that question. Let's go on to the next one. What should we do as soon as we register for classes? Um, look, I mean, how, how do I say this? Um, maybe check your study list, make sure that all your classes, all that you want to take is there just because I know some people will register for a class, like let's say only the lecture and not the discussion. And then when they check, they're like, wait, why is my lecture there? Oh no, what's going on? That usually means you need to take both of them in order to be in that class. So that's one thing to do. Um, another thing, maybe check for the books that you might need the textbooks. Maybe email your professor, ask them what's gonna go on, how our class is gonna go. Maybe even ask for a syllabus in advance. Ask them, oh, you know, what, what is the schedule like? So on and so forth. I mean, that's, that's what I would do if you wanna be like extra pre preppy and prepared, if anyone else has any other advice. I was just going to say for sure, check your emails every day, um, your UCI emails. Also, um, in case you don't have one already, I would suggest like, you know, as we mentioned before, you know, get a Facebook. You could also start looking at like certain positions that are available at the moment, because I know a lot of applications are open. So if you're interested in, you know, in applying, getting involved this very first quarter, then, you know, you could do your little research and like see what interests you and then start working on those apps as well. So for Facebook groups, I would recommend probably the class of 2024 or honestly any class that's there. I feel like a lot of the information is pretty repetitive on the class pages but like you could just add on any class page but the one specific to like new students would probably be the class of 2024. That was amazing. <laughs> Anyone else have any other intake before we move on? Nope okay <laughs> so next question. Being a psych major I am still undecided of what I want to do with my psych degree in the future. Are there any websites or resources that you recommend to find career options? Boy, do we have some. UCI is great, <laughs> has a bunch of opportunities and resources. Two things that I would definitely recommend, SARC for sure. We talked about SARC, um, about like graduate stuff, career, so on and so forth. Also, Devere, Division of Career Pathways helps you find careers, helps you get jobs and find jobs available, so on and so forth. Um, we will link them in the chat again, which is totally fine. But does anyone else want to pitch in? Um, I guess just like based off experience, uh, just because like I feel like a lot of some psych students might feel pressured to like immediately like apply to grad school after they graduate. Um, so like, I guess like for me, like I'm taking a gap year just so like I could like do more research and actually like find what I'm like passionate about and like what I'm interested in. So like I'm thinking of like doing internships, like maybe getting a research job afterwards. Like I don't want like any students to feel like pressure that they have to like apply to grad school immediately. I mean, it's great, but like I feel like it might also like just help you like get some weight off your chest so you could actually like be dedicated and passionate about for that like grad school program that you want. Also, so you can like ace it and get into like the school that you want during your interview, yeah. I would also um, suggest that, cause I'm a psych major too. I'm a sociology and psych major, but I really, really like psych. Um, uh, and you know, the kind of uh, jobs that are involved in psychology. And I honestly am in the same boat. I don't know what kind of um, career I want to take, but I'm into clinical psychology. And I know Dr. Lewis, she's one of the, the psychology, one of the psychology professors that teaches a lot of the psychology courses, like clinical psych. Um, and I don't know what can, abnormal psych too. I think she teaches a lot of the psych courses actually. Um, she's really good at, you know, also explaining everything in depth because she's a psychologist herself. And she has her own practice also. So she's a, also a good resource to kind of like reach out. 
um and also look at the apa website like i think they have some resources there or links on how to like look for accredit accreditation for programs and and you know kind of potential careers um yeah and go to the the division of career pathways um make an appointment with one of the advisors there they have a lot of um they can help you kind of like narrow down your your interests and kind of give you the resources there to kind of like guide you through what you want to do with the psychology degree I've done that. They're really helpful. Um, I just have like a really quick one. This might be a more daunting resource, but you can always ask your TAs about their experience of like transitioning between undergrad and grad. And even your professors, if that's something you want to do, like the people who are in the field are the best people to give you summaries of like what they do, what they're currently doing, um, what they have done and how they got there. Um, so there's no better people than the people who are in it or like a little bit ahead of so like the grad students who are like you but like maybe in the future so like they know ask them i've done it maybe like twice it is kind of a little bit scary because it's their personal life so you know it might be kind of weird to be like hi tell me your whole story but it's important to get to know um the ins and outs of how to get where you want to be and um yeah just shop around because don't i would say just don't rush like Karen was saying, don't rush into something if you're not going to be passionate about it because that might not be the best um, way to succeed. So, yeah. I love all of these answers. <laughs> I wish I got this information before I got before I was transferred. Oh man. Okay, I think we're good. But just a heads up, guys. I had a few questions about this, but all the resources we talk about, you can access them whenever you can make appointments even during the summer and talk to them it is totally fine um make consultations appointments whatever it's called do it just do it for your own benefit and for your own advantage there's no repercussions so next question how did you stay social during the pandemic both living at home and living on campus going to a new school where you don't know anyone is daunting enough let alone during a pandemic where you're supposed to social distance so how do you stay social joining clubs <laughs> that's me at least i join clubs that's like the only way i have social connections right now um because you know we have meetings like every like wednesday i believe um and we have game nights and so on and so forth um i mean that's what i do does anyone else have any other you know advice um i will say that oh go ahead so sorry okay thanks I was gonna say, if your classes have like live discussions, um, it might not be a bad idea to attend to get to know the people in your class and then you can form study groups if that's something, if that works for you and your study methods. Um, you also get to talk to the professors. Um, I would say also discussion boards, which, like try to be active. If, even if they're not mandatory, like maybe take a look, there might be some helpful resources there. Um, I would say just, Put yourself out there in the classes because on, on top of getting involved in clubs i would say like classes is another great way to um, meet people who are all in the same class as you and so there's a commonality there that might be easier to forge some kind of bond so yeah yeah i, I totally agree with Catherine. like definitely even though classes won't be in person reaching out to people online can sometimes i feel like even be easier because you're not actually having to like talk to them, uh, you know, in person at first. Um, so yeah, definitely like, I know that in some of my classes, people literally just post on discussion boards and they're like, hey, if anybody wants to talk about the homework, like email me at this email. Um, and definitely, I mean, like, you're still able to social distance. And if you want to meet people in person, there's, there is, you know, ways to do it, staying six feet apart, wearing masks. Um, that's what I've done with some of my friends back home. And also like keeping in contact with the friends that you have already. Um, I know that when I came home, like I had friends who came back as well, but I honestly didn't talk to them for like the first three months of quarantine just because everything was so overwhelming and you know, you're concentrating on your own schoolwork. And if you go to different schools, it's so different. Um, but when you're back home and stuff, it's kind of easier to start talking to those old friends again. Uh, so definitely if there's anybody you wanna like reach out to and just like say, hey, like, how's it going? Like definitely take advantage of uh, being back home and still like keeping those connections like alive. Great answers. <laughs> I think we can move on now. Okay, 
this is a long question. So hopefully my mouth is able to answer all, um, say all this. So, hi, I was admitted as a psych major and now contemplating on whether to switch to psychological science, PSCI, not entirely sure what that is. So I want to get into clinical counseling work in the future as a career and have been suggested by other students that psychological science might be a better fit. Considering that psychology and psychological science can lead to the same or similar end goal, how much does the undergrad degree matter in terms of the long run, going to grad school and career wise? Also, should I stay as a psych major or switch over to psychological science? Any advice? Um, just for me, just from what I've heard, your major does not dictate your career. Like, there's a bunch of people that go from like psychology and then they do like a business type of job. So, Honestly, the major just talks about what are your interests, what, are, what do you like, so on and so forth. Again, pick a major that you're going to actually, like, you know, enjoy because you're going to spend two or three years here doing this <laughs> for a long time. And hopefully you're not in a major that you hate and you're dread dreading. Um, but that's honestly my advice. I don't know if anyone has any of experience about this. Um, so from what I heard, because I was just on Reddit reading on that, so I could like send a link to the student. Um, so the thing is like, um, so PSI is more like social psychology and the psychology program uh, that you're in right now is more like cognitive based. I mean, that's why it's, it's, that's why it's in the Department of Cognitive Science. So like, according to this professor that I'm reading up on, uh, he said that like, they're both like research based. It's just it just really depends on like what you want to do. Um, and then there's like other students saying that like, um, I guess like the other thing about being in the psych BA is that it's more, I guess like research based, even though it's it's complicated, but like we Lynn said, uh, it doesn't determine like what you do with it. Um, yeah, I don't know, that's all I could say. <laughs> and if you do want to change your major, we have this full on process that we can talk about, but since that's not for sure, you can like email one of us about it um, if you do or are interested in changing your major. Anyone else have any other suggestions or advice? I just wanna say something really quickly. Um, I think one of the main differences um, would be just, even though they're very similar, there's a lot of overlap, I would say that like the courses offered might be the biggest difference in since it's a different school and different major. Um, like I was gonna say you could try and take one, but it might, that might be problematic. So like you could try, I would, this is really hard because they're so similar, but there's enough of a difference that it like the coursework is like not the same. Yeah. Like sense. I know that like the psychology courses for the BA are more like science-based, like learning, memory-based, um, also like more like statistical type of like research. And then like the psychological science is more like health-wise and like developmental psych. So those are some, like it's similar, but like not similar. It just depends on the, also like the classes that you want to do. Yeah. I think those are great answers. Oh, I'm sorry, Catherine. No, it's totally fine. I'll just say it's really confusing, but I think if one of, if cognitive, like memory, um, neuro processes, if that's more interesting than like BA, like coursework, there's a lot of other like clinical psych, like Iris said, that's also offered in this psych BA. But I think like there's a lot of specificities between the two that might make a difference in just how you um, like thrive and what's more interesting to you. So I think that would be the main difference, more so than like the degree itself, just like the classes. Sorry that it's super confusing, but yeah. That's fine, it's fine. I think also from my knowledge, um, there is, everyone did get a handout, I believe, about the differences between psychology and psychological science. So you can also check into that, so on and so forth. But we will now move on to the next question. So. Are lectures pre-recorded for in-person classes as well or just remote learning? I think it's just for remote learning from my ex from what I know. Um, uh, oh, wait. Oh, I just want to ask. So I had a couple of classes that were held in, in the N-Eater Pavilion, the new building. And I think they were 
uh, recorded, so you can rewatch it, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Does anyone else have similar experience? No? Um, I, I also had a class in that same building. It's like brand new. And um, so that professor would also record um, her lectures so that if you couldn't make it, then you could still watch it. But um, it's not the norm. <laughs> I think you're correct because I think in the pavilion, I think I took Psych 9B and on the side they had this Java on Canvas and you were able to like rewatch the lecture, but that was like only for that one class. Yeah, I think it's not typically the norm, but you can definitely get a class that will record it. Uh, but most of the time, uh, professors usually require you to be in person if you actually want to get the full extent of the notes, uh, or they'll also upload their um, slides, but those aren't usually as in depth. Yeah, so mostly for remote learning. <laughs> Anyways, next question. Did anyone have experience living at Plaza Verde? No. <laughs> Sam, do you? <laughs> Oh, no, but I really wish I did. Um, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I lived in the housing right across from it, so I got to see it every day. I um, was very jealous of watching everyone go in and out, but yeah, no, no experience. <laughs> I don't have, I didn't live there, but I knew a friend who lived there, and like, keep in mind, that's one of the newest housing, so like, I love all the campus housing. Great. I'm so thankful that there's houses, like, places to live. All the apartments have their ups and downs, but my friend who lived in Plaza Verde definitely said that there were problems with the elevator, um, that there was problems with flooding, and um, I don't know, those are probably all taken care of in like isolated incidents. And I would just say though, like, because it was so new and like, I think that's probably why the things were happening is because, you know, everything's new. Just like the remote learning stuff's new, stuff's gonna go wrong, but it'll eventually be fixed. So that all might be taken care of, but I was just going to say, like, that might still be a thing, but I'm not sure. Good answers. <laughs> okay, next. What do, you, you, what do you generally do when you're involved in research? Let's go research people. <laughs> um, for myself... What I would do um, this past year, I would clean data for Professor LeBron. So I would kind of look at, um, I would look at the, her paper surveys and then compare that to the data she had electronically to make sure that they were consistent. Um, I would also like look up journals for her, just resources on how, like once everything became um, remote, I was also looking up ways other orgs were continuing community engagement remotely as well. So I was just giving her insight in that sense. I feel like everyone's, experience with research is different depending on professor and then like whatever research project they're conducting. Um, but yeah, that's mainly what I would do this past year. So for my research, uh, I was making a website that will be put on Amazon Turk later. Uh, my research was about uh, memory, false memory. Um, and we are looking to get recruitment, like recruiting people. Okay, I think we're good. Next question. We do have some minor questions or like adding a minor. Um, I'd like to minor in something, but I would like something that overlaps with my psych major. So that's not too hard to adjust to the ma minor. Any suggestions? I would say sociology, maybe, just also because um, our lovely supervisor, Stella, loves sociology, so that's for her, you know, minor sociology. I'm actually thinking about minoring in sociology, so I'll tell you how that goes. <laughs> Anyone else have any, like, suggestions on what they should minor that overlaps with psychology? Sociology. Okay, sociology around the board, I'm going to guess. 
I was going to say medical anthro. I wish I would have met me minored in that as well, but it's super interesting. I took one course in medical anthro and it was so amazing. So definitely check that out as well. Okay, I think we're good with this question. So if I was to minor on something, how would I do it? So pretty much you would contact your academic advisor, tell them, oh, I'm interested in getting this minor and poof, it'll show up on your degree works. <laughs> um, anyone else have any other comments? That's what um, I Like Waylon said, it's relatively easy to add a minor. Uh, my only suggestion, suggestion is that you make sure the minor that you're adding is not one that you have to apply for um, and that the classes are ones that you are able to get just because some minors, um, you know, the classes that are required for it are major or school restricted. So it is a little bit harder. Uh, so if you are thinking about minoring in a major, a mi if you are thinking about minoring in a minor that is a little bit more complex, definitely plan that out ahead. Uh, but like Wayland said, all you have to do is, you, if you don't have to apply for it, is just go talk to your academic advisor and they'll add it. Damn also, um, check, oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, so check out the chat. Um, they're uh, providing very good um, insight on the minors too. And where to, uh, Get more info if you haven't done so <laughs> okay next does uci have coupons or discounts for theme parks mm. <laughs> yeah, i believe so it's uh i think it's from af uci uh that's where i got like tickets to disneyland and yeah and i think they have like a bunch of tickets to theme parks, but they are not selling it right now because of the COVID-19. Oh, that is so cool. I didn't know about that. Huh. I you took something every day. I, I used it once for um, Universal Studios Horror Nights as well. Mm -hmm. Please link that site, whoever, because I also am interested. <laughs> Anyways, Go on to the next question. As a transfer student, would you guys recommend getting a meal plan? Um, so based off experience, um, since I'm at ACC, well, I'm at ACC, Camino del Sol, and I didn't get the meal plan. But the reason why I didn't get it is because if you're part of any program within the Student of Success Initiatives, for example, the Transfer Student Hub is part of the Student Success Initiatives, you are able to apply for CalFresh. And uh, like 90% of students who apply to CalFresh and if they're part of the student success initiatives, um, you are most likely to get accepted for CalFresh. So that's what I have. Um, I don't have the meal plan because I got accepted. So that's like one way um, to like not pay for the meal plan. So like I would recommend like joining a program that's part of the student success initiatives. Um, I don't know if I would suggest getting a meal plan uh, for this upcoming quarter. Maybe if you go back, when we go back to campus, if you like are on campus a lot, then it's definitely a good thing to have. But like this past year I had a meal plan, but I lived off campus, even though it was still like UCI housing. And I honestly did not use it that much because when I was on campus, I would have enough time to go back and like eat something that I made at my dorm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you if you are planning on being on campus a lot, definitely it's a good idea. But if you're not, then honestly, I, I wouldn't really recommend getting one. Okay, next question it is. So without sounding too negative, what do you think will be the biggest thing we'll miss out as psych students during remote learning? And how should we make up for it? I can answer that. Um, uh, I think in terms of missing out, just the social interaction that you have in psych courses. I mean, I had um, a psychology course where you had a group, like a group project, and I know it's. I think it's much better when you actually be in person. You can talk about things, and and online it's kind of different. And you know, people are, you have to text here and there, which is good too, but it's not the same to me. That's like one of the things that I kind of miss from the actual course classes. But you can make up for it by just creating group chats on Facebook or even um, group chats in your text, in your phone, um, or even the Google Docs, share a Google 
talk and you know communicate from there or even meet like this in um via zoom and kind of kind of have like that connection there build that connection because not everybody likes group projects to be honest but i mean during this time i think that's going to be beneficial because you're not going to meet anyone really in person um so yeah that's my thing that could quite ease the the negativity <laughs> Anyone else before we move on? No. Okay. Uh, really quickly, just so I, we could save time. Um, so Jessica, someone's interested in the Falls Memory Research Project. So hopefully you can type out an answer as how they can get in touch and the links and stuff. Um, as for the next question, I think the last question, what class do you recommend to take for the computer technology requirement? ICS 31, Social Sci 3A, Psych 114M. Um, I'll be honest, I took Sci 3A, and it was one of the most challenging classes I've taken. <laughs> um, for me, just because I think I, I took it with Shiree, and he has a very unique way of teaching. <laughs> um, at least for me, it was really confusing. Um, but again, that's more of a bias, my own subjective opinion. M maybe other students didn't struggle as much, but for me, it was kind of hard. Um, I've heard some people take ICS 31. It wasn't too bad, but I can't say for sure. If anyone wants to jump in on that question, go ahead. Um, so I took Psych 114M. Um, it is eight assignments. Um, the first five assignments are pretty easy. I think you could do it on your own. I did them on my own. However, the sixth, seventh, and eighth assignment leads up to building up your own code. Um, so that's where I had a little bit more of a struggle. So like for the six, seven, and eight assignments, I found, um, like another partner to work with just because like I was struggling because I took it in person. Um, the professor, um, basically like you're on your own. So you have to read the textbook and you have to watch the YouTube videos that he has. Um, and then what else? And basically you're just in class working on your own. Um, yeah, that's my input. Just like I recommend finding a partner for the last three assignments in case you do take Psych 114M because that's where the biggest struggle is at. I just have a quick question, Karen. Do you know who the professor was? Because I'm just trying to see if it was different so I don't give like the same class. Do you remember? Uh, hold up, one moment. Because it sounds similar enough, but I don't remember. Give me a second. Um, I have like all the work saved. I think it started with like an M. M. I don't remember. No, it's okay. The M is good enough. So I had a, I took Psych 114 out also, but I had a different professor, which I think is interesting because I thought it was going to be the same person. But I also took it almost four years, like almost three years ago. So I mean, things might have changed. But I was gonna say similar to Karen, like either finding someone to people to work with in class or like I lived in office hours. They were like three hours long and I stayed the whole time because I thought it was challenging. I'm not good with MATLAB, which is what I think it always is. Yeah. Okay. So um, if you're more savvy with like <laughs> coding and stuff, maybe this is like great for you. I definitely had to stay in office hours all the time because I needed the help, but I thought it was like challenging enough to be interesting and not challenging enough to be like, oh, I'm gonna fail. And if that's like a good balance. So I think that's all the questions and that is actually time, which also, by the way, I just wanna pitch in that person who's interested in the Disneyland course, please contact me or you can stay after and we can talk about it for like five minutes if you do wanna talk about the Disneyland course because I am so in it and I will even wear my Jasmine headband right now. Um, but anyways, thank you everyone for staying with us. It was amazing, I love you guys. Thank you for giving us so many questions to answer. Uh, if you do have any other questions, I will provide our links, our emails, how you can contact us, so on and so forth in the link or in the chat, there we go, in the chat. Um, please contact us if you do have any other questions. But as of right now, you are totally free to go. And if that person is still here that wants to talk about Disneyland, please text me. <laughs> Here's our links. 
But yeah, anyone want to give some parting advice? Um, just thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Good luck. You'll be great. You got this. And don't be afraid to contact us. <laughs>